I see a smart city as a city which empowers citizens. You know, it, um, it gives you options. Um, it's, it allows you to unlock your potential in, in, a, in a physical space, but also in a digital space. So, uh, you know, I see a smart city as a citizen-focused city which connects systems and, um, you know, harnesses big data and is, you know, is responsive. I think a smart city is a, a city that listens, a city that reacts to its citizens who are the, the main components of a city. So I see a city as a living place, not, not a collection of buildings and traffic lights. It's, uh, it's about people. Municipalities want to offer their citizens a great service, plus they want their city to be one of the best cities to live in in the world. So we're finding uh, very cooperative because they're very keen to see how smart technology can help uh, make a city more attractive and attract inward investment, which of course everybody wants. Well, the idea of a smart city is that you try to uh, provide citizen services in a more efficient way and try to establish models of resource deployment so that you understand, uh, okay, so how can we do things smarter uh, and more efficient with a strong link into doing things in a low carbon slash more sustainable way. What we're trying to do in the project is translate open innovation that has been so popular and so fantastic and so successful in the private sector to the public sector. Because we believe that the public sector needs innovation too, and this innovation cannot come only from inside. It has to come from the outside. Uh, Liverpool is a, is a port in the northwest of England. Uh, it's got a rich maritime history. It was um, formerly you know, the second city of the empire, you know, very much on the global uh, trade routes. Uh, so it's got you know, a rich, grand history. More recently, it's been a city in decline. It was the fastest shrinking city in Europe, I think, in the 80s. And you know, it's, it was a bit down on its heels. But um, in the 90s and the noughties, you know, it was uh, very much the, the tiger of the UK economies. Um, and it really, it really went through a sharp growth with its regeneration of the city centre. We're now a growing economy. Um, we're the second fastest growing economy in the UK after London. The, the Liverpool example is a, is a very good one where the councillors have taken a great interest. They want to make Liverpool a world-class city. It is the most, one of the most famous cities in the world at the moment, but they want to make it a city of the future as well as a city of the past. To make it a city of the future, they need to make sure they have all the infrastructure that's of a cutting edge city. The, for Liverpool, it's about, it's not a greenfield city. It has a past, a great heritage, and it's about implementing solutions that work with the city for, for, their, for their citizens. And so for, for Liverpool, it's about improving the quality of life for people in the city and also attracting people to the city. I think in the context of Liverpool, in many ways, I'd, I'd say we've, we've always been a smart city. You look at our rich history, there was the first uh, electric overhead railway was here. The first ever train left Liverpool, uh, George Stevenson's rockets to go to Manchester. We had the first man-made uh, wet dock. You know, so these sort of transport infrastructures, you know, I'd, I'd say they were smart. I think it's the smart cities that will survive the next 30 years and the ones that aren't smart which will which will die. If you look at cities like Barcelona for example, you know, that's a city that was around 2000 years ago and I was recently with the uh, the CIO of Barcelona and he said Barcelona will still be around in another 1000 years. He can't say the same for Spain. And I think, you know, cities outlive countries. I'm from Barcelona, and Barcelona is a very touristic city. We have 10 million tourists in Catalonia a year, and so on. Our city hall is making apps for maps and, and, and apps uh, and web apps for the maps of the city since years. And they try to compete. And so two years ago, they decided, well, let's open the data and let's give it to Google Maps. Well, what, which map do you think the tourists use? the one of Barcelona or Google Maps. Google Maps. Uh, unfortunately, we are continuing producing our own map that nobody uses anymore, and nobody even knows that this exists. Uh, this is the kind of waste of money that we cannot tolerate because we need this money for doing useful things. If something is being produced and is being produced free, let that happen. We don't need to use taxpayers' money for something, a services that is being done. Open data and, you know, uh, government and public sector opening data is, is one of the biggest opportunities for entrepreneurs and, and small and medium businesses. It will create a new ecosystem. I think out of the, you know, 
massive amounts of data, we will create new services. People will harness big data, whether it be application developers or you know smart city practitioners, you know data scientists. These new sort of jobs, they will find a way to improve people's lives or improve um, businesses via new services. And I think it's almost the question of what can't be done and you know, imagine the possibilities. Instead of governments make all the applications that they think we need, they open data. They open the data and let people, companies, people for profit, non for profit, uh, uh, companies, developers, hackers, whatever they want, foundations, to make the applications and make the services. Some of the services, they will have a business model and will earn money. Others will be for free. Others will come from big corporations. Others will come from corporations of two people or single people, single person. But all these will produce services. And we have been doing that. This has been happening for the last five years. And you see services that are completely unexpected, that the government will never produce. But these services are useful and they produce value and they create a lot of employment. Municipal leaders are very conscious about making cities more livable. They want to make them more sustainable. They want to use less power. They want to make transportation work. I mean, recent studies we've shown that if you make transportation much more usable, there'll be less traffic because more people will be on public transport. And that's what they want. If you know when the bus is coming on your smartphone, you're more likely to take it. People want certainty. Let's take the city operating system as an example. It's a cloud-based software system, but you need data that feeds into the system. Uh, so which, which will obviously be the value of the system. You have to learn from the sensors, for example, that are implemented in, in the streets. Let's use the civic space, the space in the cities, for putting experiments there. But companies and people to put experiments like new ways of detecting parking, if the parking slot is empty or not, new illumination for the streets, LED illumination, uh, new types of recharging or new ways of recharging electric cars or electric bikes. Uh, let's use the urban space as an experimentation platform and let's make it possible that companies and small business as universities or researchers, whatever they want, use it. Operators are now moving beyond connectivity. Connectivity is where it starts. It's the value beyond connectivity. It's a key part of it. And they're essentially running services, adding more value. They know how to run services. They've got large customer services operations. They've got great brands and they can invest. And to do that, they work with partners. Connected Liverpool, uh, I guess you could call as a bootstrap tech startup, really. We focus uh, indeed on uh, four areas in particular because they are recognised as the key growth areas within the Liverpool City region and those are the low carbon sector, the visitor economy, the knowledge economy and the superport. In November 2010 I met a local historian and we worked together to create Liverpool's first tourism guide app. One of the first things we uh, applications we created is our It's Liverpool Smart City app which is uh, a free application available in the uh, app store. And uh, this particular app is focused on the visitor economy, again one of the key growth uh, uh, sectors. Um, and this provides citizens, um, lots of visitors, uh, tourists, with a clear, uh, clear mobile focused guide on everything there is to see and do within the Liverpool Sea region. So it, it, it covers such things as all you know, the cultural assets, I think uh, the cathedrals, the museums, the restaurants, shops, hotels. And, this, uh, and it covers such um, technologies as uh, location based marketing. Uh, augmented reality and even audio tours in Chinese and Spanish for obviously for the tourists. So this particular app is very much focused on, on, on the visual economy. What that enabled us to do was uh, enter the market and connect us with key stakeholders in the Liverpool city region to, to sort of uh, get to our main uh, vision and aim, which is to create Liverpool to be the UK's first smart city.